Hey guys, we are about to start our final album that we're gonna be making with the Everlasting. This time we're gonna be doing the Everlasting Bundle, which is combining the Everlasting mini album and the mini Everlasting album uh, together into one album. And I've already done a video on the paper line that I plan on using, which is the Zella Teal by Prima. Um, and I will link uh, everything below. I'll link my printables below. I'll link my products below um, as best I can. So all of that will be in the description box below. So if you're looking for something, um, there will be links in the description. Uh, some of them um, are links to scrapbooking stores and some of them are links to my Amazon list. So um, depends on how you like to shop. So just check them out to see if the things that you're looking for are in there. That way it's just easier for you to find it and um, if you're just curious of how much it costs or where you can get them from or any of that or what's the specifics of the item, uh, you can just check it out that way. So what I thought I would do first is, I know I've already done the video showing you what paper line I'm going to use, but I thought we would do like a, um, a mini album prep video. How to prep for your mini album or how I prep before I start making my mini albums. And I also have a few new things um, for you guys, to show you guys, and <laughs> and there's a reason why I, I, it's taken me so long to get started on this particular album, um, so I'll go into that in a little bit more detail here in just a sec. Okay, so one of the first things I do when I'm working with a paper collection is I go through the paper pad and I take a sheet out of each um, pattern. So in this case, it says there are six double-sided designs, so there's four sheets of each. So what I did was I went through, I flipped through, and I tore two sheets out because there are two different designs on the pattern paper. Um, this is when you're working with, you know, double-sided um, pattern paper, of course. So I went through and I did that to all um, of the different patterns, and so that leaves me with 12 separate uh, patterns okay and the reason I do this is it's a lot easier for me to flip through and say okay I want to put this one with this one or um, you know to see which ones are going to go if I'm putting an envelope or if I'm making an insert or whatever just it's a lot faster for me to put you know visualize it down on my table versus me going through like this and and flipping through it's just easier for me this way um, Another thing you can do, which I did not do this, um, is some of the uh, collections have like cut apart sheets and there's no reason why you shouldn't go ahead and cut through one of these sheets and have all these little cards ready to go. I just haven't done that yet and I'm not sure I will because I do have the ephemera pack from this collection. So that's the first thing I do. So I get all of my pattern paper uh, ready to go, pulled out and ready to go. Let me, um, let me fan this out because I want to tell you guys. The reason it's taken me so long to get going on this is I was, I've been looking for several things. One, I was looking for some coordinating uh, solid card stocks that would go nicely with this collection. Um, is that 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, because there's really a lot of these patterns are really busy so i wanted to find some solid colored card stocks that i could use to go with this well i don't know about you guys but i have the hardest time finding matching or coordinating colored card stocks now sometimes you can nail it um, easy and it's not a problem but these are like really muted colors and they're specific colors so it's very hard to to really kind of match up um, a coordinating card stock now, I did find um, one cardstock. This is a gray, it's a gray craft cardstock and it's Recollections. And this cardstock is really, it really does coordinate. It's not too, um, it's not too blue, it's not too black or whatever. Do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's kind of like the perfect tone um, for, because there's a lot of grays in through here. But there's also blacks and there's, you know, there's also different sort of, it's hard to explain unless you have this collection. There's all kinds of shades in here. So there's like some like taupey colors and then there's creams and ivories and I don't know. It's just, it's a very interesting collection. It's got a lot of different tones in it. So I did find this 
craft cardstock does work well with this. And what I'm going to do, let me show you, is I'm going to be printing the wood background design onto the solid color cardstock. So when you, let's say for example, um, I was going to put like a flap here. You know, when you make a flap out of this pattern paper and it comes over, the, you know, it comes over top of this gray, it's a nice contrast, okay? So, I was like, okay, great, I finally found a gray that I like that goes with the, um, with the collection, but that just wasn't going to be good enough for me. I needed some more, when you're making a mini album, you've got lots of pages, you've got lots of flips and envelopes and inserts and tucks and all of that jazz. Well, you need a lot of different contrasting um, patterns and colors and all of that. So what I'm trying to say is like, for example, if um, we only had two sheets left, we had these two sheets and we wanted to do some flips and things, you, there's not really any contrast there. So it wouldn't look as nice, if that makes any sense. I hope that's, hope that's making sense. So then I wanted to try to kind of match the, um, the different tones of this teal and it, they're beautiful. They're absolutely gorgeous. There's a light teal, there's a darker teal. There's even kind of like, I don't know, even a softer uh, color palette of teals in here. And then there's all these different color topes and they're, I mean, they're just beautiful. Well, I took, um, I got my six by six pad out and I took the, one of the cut aparts here and I took it to every store and I was trying to find a cardstock that would match. Well, I was very unsuccessful and I was getting frustrated. I just want you guys to know. <laughs> I think that we should tell scrapbooking companies that when you make a paper line, you need to have some coordinating cardstocks that go with it. Am I right? I think we need to start telling them that. Um, it would just make it so much easier to, you know, make a plan and, and build this beautiful scrapbook album that you're making and it just be, you know, effortless. Do you know what I'm saying? So that was, that's my goal. That's what I'm trying to achieve here. <laughs> so that's why I do my templates because I want it to be effortless and I want it to be easy, you know? So, okay, so I've got my gray and I'm definitely going to be using that and I'm going to be using my wood background design because I get asked that quite a bit. So um, I've got that. So then I couldn't find my greens, um, my teals. Um, I was trying to find some pretty taupes and all of that. Well, it was like beating my head against the wall. So everything was either too bright or too dark or too solid or too something. There was just something that just didn't go. So I decided to make my own um, muted background colors and also I decided I was going to make them available to you guys and I was just going to do the teals, the, the, the two teals that I wanted to do, but then I changed my mind and decided that I would do like a whole color palette of muted um, background designs. So let me show you that. This is new in my shop. And this is what they're, this is what they look like. Um, they're muted backgrounds and I've got me a little post-it note here telling me which ones are going to go with this collection. Just, just so you know. So I'm going to sit that over here. <laughs> it's not supposed to be there. So this is what you get. It's, it's a 12 or actually 13 pages. Uh, it's a, <laughs> it's a PDF that has 13 pages and this is uh, one of the pages. So it's kind of like a swatch uh, page. So it's a color swatch page. So, and they have numbers on them, even though the page themselves don't have numbers on them. Um, the reason I did that is I wanted you, I wanted to be able to tell you, okay, I'm going to be using, um, color number two. And then that way you could go get the proper paper. So in the PDF, color number two will not be page number two. Um, it would actually be the third page because this is page number one, but it is the second color page. So keep that in mind. So here's all these beautiful colors. There's a, they're all muted and they're kind of a color wash. Okay. So let me go through and show, oh, I wanted to show you, this is on white cardstock, right? And this is on ivory cardstock. So you get a whole different um, feel and tone if you print it on ivory cardstock. And then this is on vellum. It's going to be hard for you guys to see, but then again, there's another different tone from the white and the ivory cardstock. So you're getting a lot of different tones, a variety of color. So this is going to be a really important sheet here for you guys. So let me show you the colors. So this is number one, and this is the darkest teal. Let me grab a sheet here underneath here. So this is the darkest teal in this, um, this collection. 
So we're gonna be using this one. Um, I, have a, I have my list up here, but we're definitely gonna be using this one a few times. You see how it matches perfectly? Um, and no matter what you put it up next to in this collection, that green, that teal color, it just matches perfectly. So let me show you what it looks like uh, when you print uh, the wood background on top of that. You see how it's kind of got this like color wash, like almost like, um, you know, like painted wood, like stained wood almost. You see how that kind of looks like that? It's because of the way I did this background. It's like a, it's a color wash is basically what it is. So I don't know how else to explain it to you. So that's what that looks like when you print it onto that, that when you print the wood background onto this. So there is um, number one. And then here's number two, and this is the lighter version of the teal that's in this um, paper collection. So we're gonna be using that one as well. So that's number two. And this is number three. It's kind of like a bluish uh, color wash. And then this one is like a vivid um, green, yellow green color, isn't that pretty? And then this one's more of like a tan, taupey. Oh, my printer was running out of yellow, so ignore that strip right there. <laughs> but don't look at that. Uh, but it's like kind of like a soft uh, cream, taupe, tan, I don't know. It's a really pretty color. But this one goes very well with the paper collection as well. So this one is number five. We're going to be using that one. And then this one's number six. And this one's kind of like a... It's like a, it's a mix between a creamy ivory and a grayish color, um, but it's really, really pretty. And it also goes with this uh, collection without being too harsh. And you see how it's got that water, that I mean, that uh, washed color look to it. Um, so that's number six. We're gonna be using that one. This one's number seven. And this one's more of like a grayish, like a color wash of gray. This one also, goes very well with this paper collection. So we're gonna be using number seven as well. This is eight. It's kind of like a lavender-y color wash. I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see these colors, but it's really pretty. This one we're not gonna be using. And then this one's nine, and it's kind of like a, it's not a hot pink, but it's definitely a pink color wash. Um, but it's really pretty. We're not gonna be using this one either. Um, and then here's number 10. This one's more like a plummy purple, not so much a pinky purple, but more of a plummy type lavendery purple. And this one's really pretty. So we're not gonna be using that one. And then this one's like a purple purple. It's like a, it's close to number eight, but it's a little bit different. If you see it on the swatch there, number eight is a little bit more of a reddish purple and number 11 is a little bit more of a bluish purple. Okay. So that's this one, it's really pretty. We're not gonna be using that one either. But this one, this one's number 12, and this one we are gonna be using. This one is a pink, kind of like a red wine stain color. I don't know how to explain it just quite right, but this one, it goes really nicely with this teal color green. So we're gonna incorporate another color into this paper collection just because I felt like it needed it um, and it goes with every single paper so the tone of it matches matches it beautifully so that is one of the new items that's available in my Etsy shop and I will link that directly below so just look for muted backgrounds there'll be a link if you're interested in checking that out um, so that will be in the description description box below so we're going to be using page number one, two, five, six, seven, and 12. Okay, so one of the prep things that I do, so I, I picked out which colors I'm gonna be using with this mini album out of the muted backgrounds uh, printables. So I went ahead and I printed one of each sheet off and I put the number of the page at the bottom just so I remember. So there's number one, number two, let me fan them out for you. There's number one, two, five, six, seven, and 12 in the reverse order, actually. Let's do, <laughs> let's do it this way. Okay, so I went ahead and printed all of these out, just one sheet of each one, so that when I'm trying to figure out what pages I wanna use in that particular page that I'm building, then I have, um, I have my options right there. So you see how nicely these colors go with this paper line. I mean, it's just, 
it's just beautiful. If, I, I wish you could see it in person, so I hope you guys go check it out. But so these are the pages. So I printed off one of each page. So that's another way that I do some prep before I even start a mini album. So let me sit these back here with the grays. Or with the gray, not the grays. Just so you can, we can kind of keep it in frame a little bit so you guys can still see what we got going on here. Okay, I think y'all can see it just a little bit. <laughs> Alrighty. So then, another thing that I do is, here is... Here's a box of all of the flowers, and this is the um, ephemera that was part of the paper, or that 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 is part of the collection um, that I showed you. So I opened it up and I poured it out into here. So that way, this time when we're making our album, we're going to go ahead and we're going to just do some embellishing and some fiddling with each page because I think it worked out really nice last time. You know, you had more of a finished look at the end of the video, and I know some of them get a little long, and I'm going to try to do better because. Uh, this time, this is the third time around. We really went step by step with how to make the pages and stuff. So I'm probably not going to include all of that um, how to put the main base page together stuff because it's all in other videos. Okay. So I dumped all of my little uh, bag of ephemera out into this side. And then over here, I just took these out of their packages but left them into the, in the cellophane because um, I just figured I would open them when I went to go use them. You know what I mean? Like if I knew, okay, I want a big flower for this, so I would open the big flower and dump it in here. Does that make sense? So this is kind of another way that I prep. So I have all of my goodies right there. And then another thing that I do, hang on, I might cause an avalanche here. Okay. <laughs> Here, this is one of my keepsake boxes. This is one of the prototypes that I made um, before I even released my keepsake. So I use this a lot. I used it in my last video too. So it's got a lid um, in it and everything. So, And then in this box, what I did was I've got my six by six paper pad and I may go through and take a page out of each one of this or each one of the patterns out of this one as well. Um, I haven't decided yet. Um, but what I did do is I opened up all, there's this is the sticker sheet from the ephemera pack so that's in here then I took uh, everything out of their package but I kind of stuck it back to the outside of the package that way when I want to go grab one of these I don't have to fiddle with the package I can just grab it stick it down and I did the same thing with these puffy stickers see they're on the outside of this package so I just took them out of the package and stuck them back down to the outside of the cellophane package and then here's those rubber stickers, right? I did the same thing, so I can just grab them. And then I took the um, wood pieces, the wood pieces, these are not wood pieces. <laughs> I took the chipboard pieces out of their package as well, and so I've got them sitting here. So another reason I wanted to do this video, so this way everything's easy to grab. Is that making sense? I think so. Um, another reason I wanted to do this video is because I wanted to show you guys some different things that I'm going to be using as well. Um, throughout this album. The first thing I want to tell you is the ink that I'm going to be using. I have tried all the different inks that I have and this one here looks the best with this paper line. This is a Distress Oxide Black Soot um, and it's by Ranger um, and this one looks the best. So this is the one I'm going to be using and a blendy tool of course. And then I'm also going to be using two colors of Baker's Twine. This is black and white and gray and white. So I've got those sitting over here in my um, in my keepsake box that I've got all the other goodies. Why well, won't that stand? <laughs> that I've got all the other goodies in. So I've got it prepared, ready to go. Okay. So then um, a few more things that I'm going to be using that you guys may not have in your stash. So I wanted to kind of show you them ahead of time. Um, and there are these two things. These are Tim Holtz uh, Ideology. One of them is an index clip and the other one is a memo pen. So I'm going to be using both of these throughout the album. Um, these things you may not have in your stash, so if you want to uh, be prepared ahead of time, um, then you may want to grab these two. Um, I'm probably going to use some paper clips and some different random things that you may already have. So these two um, I didn't have in my stash. Well, I did have these, but I didn't have this. So um, I just kind of wanted to give you a heads up on this. So I'm going to put those. 
I think I'm going to put them here in this box. I might put them with the uh, ephemera at some point, but we're going to put them in that box for now. And then the other thing I'm going to use, I'm going to do, actually going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to test something out during this mini album, but I think I'm going to go back and forth between the two. So um, I've got me some hole reinforcements here that I've colored. And I've also got this new tool, uh, We Are Memory Keepers, where you can punch um, the whole reinforcement out of whatever pretty cardstock you're using. Let me show you an example of where I've used it once. So I just punched that out of one of the uh, scrap pieces of paper. I was just playing around with color combinations here, in case you're wondering. So I used it there. It's a little smaller than a regular whole reinforcement, but... Um, I kind of like the idea of being able to use the pattern paper, depending on the part of the pattern paper you're using. So I'm going to test this little dude out um, and see and see if it's even worth it. But I will um, let you know my thoughts on that at another time. <laughs> and then, um, like I said, I was going to be using some color. So I picked some that I've already like pre-colored out of my stash of you know, colored whole reinforcements that I think will go really nicely. This is from the last mini album we did. That's the spray we made. So it actually looks halfway decent with this paper collection. Um, so um, I'm going to be using these. And then I wanted to make a black soot one to match, you know, my ink. So what I'm going to do, these are the whole reinforcement labels that I'm using. So what I'm going to do, oh, I wanted to show you all before I did that. There's like a cute way that these um, little memo pens can be used, just like that. And it's like it's like the stick pen idea, except you can um, you know you can change that little thing out. It's just cute. I wanted to. It's just cute. I think it's a cute idea. And this was just kind of like a me playing around. But um, but anyway, so let me show you again really quickly <laughs> how I color my whole reinforcements um, with my inks. So. I'm just going to take a set of white ones. I'm going to take my Distress Oxide ink. You can go, ow, <laughs> it's a new, newer pad. You can go straight to the pad like this, which is pretty, or you can actually use your blending tool and you will see the difference. So let me do that before I do it. See the difference in the amount of ink that gets put down, right? So, I think, because I've already got some grayish ones, I think I'm going to add just a little more ink. I don't want them to be, you'll see what's going to happen here in a minute. They're not going to stay quite like this. Okay. Look, <laughs> now i got black fingers. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, I've got to be careful, but I'm just going to spray it. This is just a water bottle, a uh, squirt bottle full of water. I'm going to squirt this with water and I'm going to let it sit for a minute. So I'm going to dry it just a little bit. This is a Ranger uh, heat tool. I'm going to dry it just a little bit. And then I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to go right over top of it, a clean paper towel, and I'm going to dab the excess moisture off like that. <laughs> Look at that. That's pretty cool. And I'm going to finish drying it, and then I'll, I'll give you a close-up look at it. Okay, so if you can see, for example, look how well it matches uh, this paper collection, right? And it's not black, black. Um, okay, so let's check them out. Aren't they cool? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add this with my different random selection. I don't have any pink ones, actually. I need to make some pink ones, don't I? Oh, I'm going to have to find something that will make that color pink. Um, so I'm going to be using these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those. Where am I going to put those? I think I'm going to put those with my ephemera um, pack over here. No, I'm going to stick them. I'm going to stick them over here um, in front of the paper pad or maybe in front of the stickers. I'm just going to have them in here. I'm just going to put them in here. <laughs> I'm going to put them in this box. <laughs> I'm cracking myself up. Um, and this tool, I'm just going to leave out next to me over here because I'm right-handed, so everything's on my right-hand side. So I'm just going to leave that out because I am going to try it out just to see. Nobody sent it to me or anything, but I would definitely like to test it out. 
Okay, so now I have the very last thing that I know you guys don't have because they're brand new in my shop. Um, <laughs> these are actually made these for something else. These are something I've been working on for quite a while now. And I'm, I don't, you guys may not know this, but I'm working on a new um, template. And it's, it's not ready, of course. It's months off, probably. But these were kind of part of that... Um, set thing that I was working on and it's my new thing is going to be different it's going to be different for me so we'll see how that goes but I'm pretty excited about it I think you guys are going to love it um but anyway so these things that I'm about ready to show you they were actually made for something else so I am they've been ready I just haven't released them yet but I think that they are going to go beautifully with this paper collection um there's two things there's two sets and these are Build Embellishments Set 2, Vintage Ephemera, and Set 3, uh, Vintage Notebook. Now, this may look familiar to you guys. Let me grab it. Okay, so when we did this album, um, I, I know y'all remember my road trip out, uh, <laughs> my, my road trip video um, where I showed you all the cool things that I found. Well, I used the pages that I found, that vintage notebook that I found, I used the pages as ephemera, and I used that um, checkbook, the checks, um, as ephemera in here, just different little spots. Um, there's the check, there's a check right there. Um, there's another little, you know, embellishment. Um, let's see, that's part of the paper from that notebook. And there's some more from that notebook, and there's um, part of the check there. So, I promise, oh, and look, I even used it in the cover. There's part of the check, and there's another piece of the check, and there's some of that notepad paper under there. So, I had promised you guys that I would um, make them available to you in printable form. So, what I did was, let's do this one first. This one is the vintage notebook, and this is the actual size of the notebook that I purchased, but I changed it, of course. I modified it, um, took a lot of the wording off and added my little label there, and then there's one of the pages. So then I made it bigger. So it, there's a small version and a big version. So this is the only one that has a color on it. Um, I just wanted to keep that. This is the color of the book that I actually purchased. So this is the set number three, a vintage notebook. Okay, so there's seven pages, I think, in there. I can't remember. Yeah, there's, well, we'll count here in a second. <laughs> so you get this one, and then you get one that is blank, or it's plain, okay? So it just looks like that. So you could print it off onto your pattern paper um, and make a little book as well. And then it also comes with two little labels there on top. So you get a plain one, and then here is uh, the page for the large one. It goes inside. Um, it's got the staples and everything. And then there's some different little bits of old paper. Some of them were um, from recipe books from my mom. Um, some of them were just very old paper from my grandparents uh, way back in the day. One of my issues, the reason I did this, because <laughs> I know it seems kind of silly, Jennifer, why did, you, why did you offer us, you know, paper that we can buy at the store? Well, you cannot, there's something about vintage colors that you can't really buy today it's, and <laughs> um there's something about just the everything about i don't know i don't even know like the staples for example you know those are rusted and weird looking and all of that but i love that look well the thing about old vintage papers is it i'm allergic to everything so it could have mold it could have anything um, on it and so it makes me sneeze a lot of times old dealing with old papers make me sneeze so this is another reason why I decided to do this type of ephemera because I don't want to sneeze but I love the look and the feel of vintage papers so this one was sized you know for this a larger uh, book and then there's some smaller little uh, cards and then instead of just giving you the plane I decided to add some pretty flowers and stuff on top of this one. So you get the plain one and then you get the pretty flower one. So the reason I'm give, I'm releasing these now is because these will go perfectly with this paper line, the Zella Teal paper line. So there's the teals in there and then there's the pink that I wanna bring in um, from the muted backgrounds. 
So I've added these, you can still see the staples, see the staples in there, and these beautiful, these are all, um, like this was a photo that someone, and someone, my uh, husband actually, a long, long time ago had sent me this bouquet of beautiful roses, and that's a picture from it, you know, so I just kind of, you know, it's adding a little personal touch to these uh, vintage items. Um, and so there's just little bits here and there, but they're, they're muted and everything's muted enough to where you can write over top of it, no problem. Um, and this one, I think that this blue, this tealish blue green color right there is so beautiful, it's my favorite. So you get that as well. So you get both the, just the regular old vintage and then you get the one with the pretty uh, designs on it. And then here, these are the smaller, um, for the smaller book which is this one right here. And this one, you get two pages. You get both sides of the staple. So you get the inside of the staple and the outside of the staple. And I just thought it was adorable. And you could take these, cut them out, fold them in half, and make little tuck pockets like I did in that album. Um, super cute. And so there's some other little old pieces of paper ephemera um, that I found in my grandparents' old stuff um, on the side there just for extra little something something. And then look at this one. Then you also get one with flowers on it. So this one has that beautiful uh, teal uh, set of flowers there. And there's the roses. And then there's that smaller version of this one there. I just thought it was adorable. And see on this one you can still see, you can see the grid paper underneath or the graph paper, whatever you want to call it. And then there's that little piece of ephemera. See how pretty that is? It's just so pretty. So that's what you get with this set of build embellishments. You get one, two, three, four, five, six. You get six pages. So this is set number three, the vintage notebook. So the ones I'm gonna be using from this one, let me grab it. I went ahead and printed them off. So we're gonna be using um, this page and this page that page and that page. So we're not gonna be, as far as I know as of right now, I'm not gonna use those two pages. So what I'm gonna do once uh, in a minute, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna trim all of this out. And I'm gonna have it ready to go, prepped and ready to go. So that's what I'm gonna be using from the Build Embellishment set three. That's set three. And then once I get all this uh, done showing you, I'll, I'll show you against the papers here. So that's set three. And then this is, this is Build Embellishment Set 2, and this one's called Vintage Ephemera. So this one's really cool. Um, check it out. Isn't that cool? So again, these are all, these are things that I found um, along the way. These are things from my grandparents, old stuff, um, like this, for example. Look at that. Look at that, where that paper clip was. I mean, you can't duplicate that. I mean, it's just awesome. And this was my grandpa's and there's some like ch ch chicken scratch all over it. <laughs> but anyway, it's, I just thought it was cute and it matches the whole feel of this paper line. Again, I'll show you that in just a minute. So there's one of the, this is, you get four pages um, in this one, I do believe. So there's one and there's a couple postcards and these are like old photo things where you would have the picture in there. Um, and you can really see the detail. Um, from those those were so cool all right so there's one page and then here's another so these are just different little like receipt tickets and this paper right here i've been using this a lot you probably haven't even noticed but i love it it's like a folded sheet of paper and it's got a little paper clip it's just too cute um and this one was from a very old old notebook um but i loved it because it had the purples and teals and and pinks in it um, and this one was from an old uh, bank book that was my grandparents. You can't see any specifics on there, just so you know. Um, and that's like the back side. That's where it like, you know, they used to use like typewriters and stuff back then. Um, that's where it bled through to the back side of the paper. And then there is that check. Now, I did size it down to be more size appropriate for mini albums, but it is the front and back. And the way, reason I did it this way is you can literally score it down the middle, fold it in half, and it looks like you've got a two-sided check. Um, but I did blur out a lot of the stuff on there that would just be um, hard to write over, but isn't that cute? And so here's uh, the other side of that. It's actually a different size, just slightly smaller, um, but it's like going on the opposite direction. So, um, and this is like a little score 
uh, paper and just like a book, a, a coupon book cover. So there's that one. And then here's the last one. This one has some little notebook paper and some smaller of those little, um, what do they call like receipt um, tickets. And then these two things, this one was on the back of one of my mom's old recipe books. And there was just something about this color that just drew me, that just, I was drawn to, not drew me. <laughs> I was drawn to something about this color. And it happens to work really nicely with this paper collection. But it's just a really old, I mean, if you could see it in person, so if you get this, there you could see the cracks, you could see the dents, you can see everything. It's just a really old paper that, again, I cannot duplicate, you know, for nothing. So, this was also... Um, this was my, one of my mammal stuff. It was some really old, and she, it's, she wrote on the other side of it. But I liked it because the color is beautiful, and you can see her handwriting. But it's opposite. Like you could, this was the back side of that paper. Isn't it beautiful? I don't know. There's just something about it that just I don't know. This one doesn't. The color is just not quite right for this paper collection. But I still might be able to work it in. So this one is the build embellishment set to vintage ephemera. So I went ahead and printed off uh, one of each sheet of this as well. So I'm gonna go through and cut all the whole thing out, all four of these and the other ones that I printed out. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna cut them all to parts so that they're ready for when I go to make the mini album. So that way I can just flip through and be like, oh, I wanna use that one. Um, this one will look cute or I can lay them on there and say, oh, what about this, what about this, what about this? Do you see what I'm saying? So it's ready to go. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, so I've got all of those uh, build embellishment pieces cut out um, in a nice little stack here. And I wanted to show you how I was taught, what I was talking about earlier when you could fold this over. I wanted to show you how to do that. Plus I wanted to show you a few other things. Um, so let me show you this one first. I don't know if this will be long enough. Yeah, nope. So remember I told you there was a front and a back on this one. So all I'm going to do is take my scoreboard um, and stylus here. And I'm just going to score it right down the middle. Just like that. And you'll notice that I haven't cut it out all the way around. Um, I did that on purpose. So then I'm going to go ahead and fold it and give it a nice crease like that and then I'm gonna glue it this is just using Fabri-Tac and you don't have to go all the way to the edges because the print doesn't go all the way to the edges so you just want to kind of go in circles to disperse the glue out pretty good and then you just want to fold it over and press Okay, I'm going to let that dry for a second because I wanted to show you some of these pieces. Let me show you. Let me see if there's a bigger one here. Um, like these two, for example. You can actually uh, fold this over and do the same thing. And then you'd have a double-sided double um, tag. Uh, but I cut these apart. But what I wanted to show you was if you have, if you have a crocodile, I think. Oops. Something stuck in my crocodile. I think, I don't, is it the big hoe or the little hoe? I think the big hoe will cut. Uh, can you tell there? You can see the little white circles. So if you go through and just punch those little circles with your crocodile, the uh, a regular old office punch is too big for this particular one. But it just adds a cute little um, realness to the piece of ephemera. So you can go through and do that to the, to the pieces that have holes like that. And then some of them have a really tiny, let's see if I can get it to focus. Have a really tiny hole. Can you see them up there? Just teeny tiny. And the smaller side of the crocodile works for that size. So if you have one of these, you may want to take a minute and go through and just punch all of the little holes that are in all of these um, little pieces. 
I don't know, it just makes it look really cute. Um, this one you can also fold in half and use as a double side. There's several. Like this one you can fold in half and use as a double sided tag. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can use these. So, um, like there's this one here that I'm pretty sure the small one. Oh, maybe the big one would be better. But I like the small one because it doesn't take away from the grungy part of the actual hole itself. <laughs> I know that's kind of silly, but. But yeah, so I've got all these pieces cut out. And if you look closely, you see how well they go with this paper line. I mean, just the tones of everything. It just look And look at how many pieces came from the, sh the sheets that I showed you. That's a lot. So that was just as dry in a minute. I'm going to go ahead. Whoa. And I'm going to trim it apart. You could use your paper trimmer because these are just straight cuts. But I'm going to grab my scissors. Not even cutting straight. So now I have a double sided check. Do you see that? It's the same, it's like the reverse image, right? That looked pretty cool. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my scoreboard out again because when I'm thinking I might use this, um, we'll see. Um, We'll see how the page construction goes, but I'm going to score it that line there where it at, in the real check, it actually is like a per perforated line. So you, you're meant to like tear it apart. So I'm just going to score it and bend it back and forth so that it's, um, it's, you know, flexible, flexible. Is that the right word? And so it bends easy, right? And so I may use this in a page. Um, or something where it's attached down here and it flips this way. Um, I just think it's super cute. Now, I printed all of these uh, build embellishments onto cardstock, but you can also print them onto regular copy weight paper, or it would actually probably be better if you used a little bit better uh, copy paper, like, um, oh, just a little bit heavier, a little bit thicker, uh, like 24 pound or 30 pound um, or cotton. 25% uh, cotton um, paper. Um, it just gives it a little bit of weight without being real thick. So you can also print them off like that. So then what I would do with all of these pieces of um, ephemera that I have cut out, I'm just going to scoop them all back together and I'm going to put them in with the... Um, I might put, well, where do I want to put them? So I want to put them in here. I can flip through them a little bit easier or I could put them in the um, ephemera part. Maybe I'll put the smaller ones here in this ephemera and then the taller ones I'll put here. I don't know. Yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I'll put the bigger sheets of the build embellishments in here in this box with all of the bigger um, items and then the smaller pieces of ephemera from the build embellishments like, like these little small cards here. Um, I think I'll put those in here. That way they don't get lost. Uh, in the shuffle of things. So I'll just stick them in here once I go through and poke holes and everything that needs, you know, that has a, a hole to poke. Is that, whoa, that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know if that made any sense. Um, but I just thought it would be cute. Like this one, for example, this cute, uh, just it's just an old piece of paper. So it's just a piece of ephemera. And I thought, how cute would it be to add just a hole reinforcement on it, right, like that, and then, where'd my, what'd I do with my, when I'm, when you're using a, a real hole reinforcement, a regular old office punch will work just the same, and uh, how cute is that? Just something that simple, and then we can journal on here, we could put flowers on here, we could do, do whatever, it's just an added little extra something something, you know? So, that's why I went ahead and brought these out now versus waiting until later because I think if you look at the paper line and you look at all of these pretty pieces, they all just kind of mesh together very well. So that is my thought process. Okay, so I hope that this was helpful to you guys to see how I prep for uh, the beginning of making a mini album. How I get all of my bits and pieces together and organized and ready to go um, just to make the process that much faster when you go to actually build your pages. Um, it just makes it so much easier. And, you know, having the right 
inks ready and having all of your embellishments ready and having your glue and all of that ready to go. Um, it just makes the process go so much faster. So what I'm planning on doing is I've, I'm going to start filming uh, right after I get done with this. Uh, you should see a video the very next day after you see this. I'm hoping. Cross your fingers. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to do it again a page at a time and we're just going to just we're going to go from beginning to end um, for each page uh, as best I can and embellishing and all of that. Sometimes we have to kind of hold back a little bit on the embellishing until the book's actually put together and then you can know just how many how thick you can get with your embellishments and stuff like that. But but my goal is to have a completed page um, every video. So, uh, and it's going to go a little bit faster than the last album that we made just because I'm not going to be showing you how to put together the main base pages or how do you cut this out or how do you attach this. Um, I, we've already done that um, through this whole everlasting process. So, um, I'm really excited. I'm so glad I finally got all of the bits and pieces together. I know it took a long time <laughs> for me to do that, but I finally did it. And I will link everything in the description box below. All of my new uh, templates that are available. I will link all the products that I've showed you in the um, links below. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below and go ahead and get all your stuff prepped and ready to go so we can start making this mini album. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, go ahead and hit this little circle right there and you may want to hit the little bell so it'll notify you, notify you every time that I upload a video and you may want to check out the other videos you see on the screen and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.